In today's lecture, we are going to discuss the great Austrian composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Mozart was born in 1756 in Salzburg, which is a small city in Austria. It's a very beautiful area. It has an ancient uh, castle in the background, and one can see the Alps in the distance. Uh, there are historical buildings, uh, cathedrals, magnificent architecture. Mozart had all of this as inspiration when he was a child. But ironically, he didn't actually particularly like the atmosphere in Salzburg. He found it stifling. Fortunately for him, his father Leopold, who was a respected musician in his own right, recognized Mozart's talent at a young age. Leopold took it upon himself to take Mozart and his sister Nonnerl on an extensive tour of the great centers of Europe. Mozart played for the aristocracy, for royalty. His talent was widely praised. And this tour took several years, and Mozart's health suffered as a result of this, but it gave him exposure to the cultural influences of numerous European countries, and his style developed as a result. These long tours put the Mozarts in a state of disfavor with the Archbishop of Salzburg. When Mozart eventually became his servant, he was treated very poorly. In those days, composers still had the status of perhaps skilled servants, as we mentioned with regards to Haydn. They, they didn't have true freedom. Freelance composers emerged a bit later on. Composers such as Beethoven had won freedom and status. But Mozart was treated poorly. There was a famous anecdote in which he was chucked out of his employer's residence out into the street. He used to dine with the servants. He wasn't treated very well. And he wanted nothing more than to break away from Salzburg and to work as a free composer in Vienna. He finally got the chance to do this. Uh, at the age of 25, and he spent the last 10 years of his life in Vienna, where he staged several successful operas such as the Nozze de Figaro um, and Don Giovanni, and in his final year, 1791, the magic flute, Die Zauberflöte. Mozart excelled in many different genres, notably the concerto, particularly his piano concertos, his style almost has a lyrical bent to it. it. It almost sounds operatic throughout. And indeed, he considered himself, first and foremost, to be an opera composer. And he wrote for many instruments, of course, the pipe organ, the piano. Uh, he loved the woodwinds. In all of his writing, there was always an element of sympathy towards the woodwinds there. He always brings them out. Later on in life, he... He absorbed the, the contrapuntal style of Bach, and he excelled in that. In some of his works, it manifested in his 41st symphony in the finale, which contains a five-part fugue in certain parts of the Requiem, uh, and throughout in numerous choral works, the C minor mass. One can see the influence of Bach. Apparently, it was a huge crisis in Mozart's life when he encountered Bach, and he realized he had a lot to learn about counterpoint. Mozart wrote flute concertos, concertos for clarinet. He particularly liked the clarinet, perhaps even more than the flute. In a previous lecture, we discussed his Symphony No. 40 in G minor. So Mozart was indeed a composer who made full use of all of these genres of the classical period, such as the symphony. Now, as we discussed, the classical period in general went through various phases. The early classical period had the galant style, whose uh, mirror in the arts in general was the Rococo style of artwork. We mentioned the famous painting, The Swing. That whimsical style of painting represented a new mood in music and in the arts in general. Composers and artists in general were moving away from the flamboyant and intricate style of the Baroque. They wanted simple melodies which the aristocracy could perform because with an emerging middle class, a bourgeoisie after the French Revolution of the time, 
These middle class individuals had money and time and they wanted music which they could perform. They weren't necessarily consummate musicians, so they needed simple melodies which they enjoyed. People had grown weary of the intricacies of the Baroque period and they wanted simple melodies which they could sing back. Mozart's melodies, be they uh, vocal or instrumental, are always easy to sing back. Apparently people used to whistle these tunes in the streets. I mean, one thinks of his opera uh, Figaro, who was one of his greatest successes. And yet, ironically, Don Giovanni, the opera we're going to look at today, it was a great success in Prague. Perhaps the, the, the climate in Prague was culturally more mature, more subtle. The Viennese were fickle, as they would say. They appreciated simple music. They didn't understand the dark and subtle moods of Don Giovanni, which we're going to see today. However, in his final year, sadly, the, the magic flute, the Zauberflöte, so was a great success in his native Austria. It was a German Zinspiel, which the, the Austrians appreciated. But then Mozart died. Of, well, nobody's entirely sure what the cause of his death was. Some claim it was rheumatoid or some sort of rheumatic fever. Uh, there are all sorts of conspiracy theories, many of which are quite ridiculous, the most uh, ridiculous of all is the, is the belief that Salieri was in some way responsible for Mozart's death, which is ridiculous because Salieri and Mozart were respected colleagues, and in fact Salieri was one of the few individuals to actually attend Mozart's funeral. In 1791, a lot is made of how Mozart was buried in a pauper's grave, but apparently that was in keeping with the times. There was an, an, an an aura of frugality at the time. And also Mozart had very strong Freemason beliefs, and some maintain that this tied in with his Freemason beliefs. We see the influence of Freemasonry throughout his works, even in the Requiem, which is seen to be um, notably Catholic music, there are elements of Freemasonry and there are elements of Catholic doctrine. And we see the, the influence of Freemasonry in the, the magic flute with the use of the number three, the key E flat major. The influence prevails throughout. It, it, Freemasonry was a fundamental force throughout Mozart's life. The sense of universal brotherhood, which he espoused together with Haydn and many other great leaders of the time, all the founding fathers of America. So it is fair to say that Freemasonry was a, a prolific force in Mozart's compositional output. He did write a certain, certain number of Masonic works. He wrote 41 symphonies. He wrote great concerti for piano. And interestingly, in his latter years, his style became more complex. One thinks of his C minor piano concerto. The complexity and the confusion of some of these works baffled the, the audience of the time. And they stopped going to his concerts. He relied on concert subscriptions. People would buy tickets and attend his, talk, and, and attend his concerts. But eventually they gave up on his music. The tide had turned um, not, in his, not in his favor. And he struggled. He lived with debt and he struggled financially. He was forced to move lodgings on many occasions. Fortunately, he had a fairly good marriage. His father looked um, he, he looked down on Mozart's wife. He felt he had married below his station in life. That he wanted the Mozart family to ascend socially. He married uh, one of the Weber daughters. He was initially in love with Aloysia, the older daughter, but then she turned up her nose at him and so he married Constance Weber, the the younger daughter of Aloysia Weber. And they were fairly happy. They had several children, some of whom survived. Mozart's son actually always lived under the shadow of his great father, and he had an, an unsatisfying life. We have photos, in fact, of Mozart's son, so because uh, he lived in the 1800s. Mozart sadly died in 1791. He was almost 36 on the 5th of December in the early hours of the morning, 1791. But in this lecture, we're going to look at his great Don Giovanni, written in 1787, four years before his final year, 1791, when, when he wrote the Requiem and the uh, Magic Flute. Just a note on the Requiem, it is now believed that it was commissioned by the son of a great noble who wanted to claim the work as his own. And the, the myth, mystique which has grown around this work, that Mozart believed he was writing it for himself because he knew that his time was drawing near, there may be some truth in this. It is not entirely clear how the work was completed. We, we accept that Sussmeyer, one of Mozart's friends, completed it at the request of Mozart's wife, although in fact others were involved too. 
This Maya did not have Mozart's grasp of counterpoints, so he was unable to complete some of the more contrapuntal parts of the Requiem to the same level that Mozart would have been able to complete them. But he did complete it, and this was at the request of Mozart's uh, widowed wife, uh, Constance. Perhaps she wanted some sort of um, financial return for the work. Uh, but Mozart did sketch out the essential parts there. In fact, it is believed that he wrote the, 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 the Lacrimosa, this day of tears on his final day. Um, if anyone can see the tears on the score, but all the same, Mozart was one of the greatest figures in history, and what he achieved in 36 years surpasses what most people achieve in far more. And we're going to look now at his uh, Don Giovanni, at the opening scene, and at the, and at the much loved catalogue Avia Madamina. Uh, catalogue de la Cuesta, the catalogue catalog of, of conquests. So it's a bit of a raunchy opera, and uh, and yet somehow the Viennese, despite their fickle and banal nature, didn't entirely get it. In Prague, it was praised and loved this work, Mozart's Don Giovanni. And we're going to enjoy the opening now, uh, Act 1, and we're going to look at the Madamina scene, which is certainly one of my favourites, and we are going to look at it and appreciate some of its details. It is late evening outside of the Commandatore's Palace in Seville. Don Giovanni has sneaked into Donna Anna's room, seeking an amorous liaison with her, and his servant Le Pervillo paces outside restlessly, complaining about his plight in life. He sings Notte e Giorno, night and day I slave away, and he complains about how his only role is that of the uh, sentinel, he must guard outside so that Don Giovanni is in court in all his escapades. So this is the famous opening scene with Leporello. Here, with the onset of an orchestral crescendo, with Leporello hiding to one side, Don Giovanni and Donna Anna descend the, the palace steps, and there is a bit of a struggle. Donna Anna um, fights against Don Giovanni. She screams, there is no hope unless you kill me, but I'll ever let you go. And Don Giovanni then protests, idiot, you scream in vain. Who am I? You'll never know. And they continue to fight. Leporello is horrified by this. He's, he's, he sings, what a racket. Heavens, what screams. My master in another scrape. So clearly Leporello is well accustomed to his master's escapades or liaisons. And he doesn't enjoy them. And Donna Anna continues to shriek, help everyone, the betrayer. And this scuffle continues. We're going to see in a minute how Donna Anna's father, the commandant of the commandatore, emerges on the scene and he commands Don Giovanni to leave his daughter alone. Here, following a fortissimo string tremolo and a shift to the minor key, the commandant emerges and he screams leave her alone rich and defend yourself don giovanni protests go away i disdain to fight with you and they continue to argue this ultimately ends up in a duel in which the commandant is fatally wounded
This is the beginning of the famous Madamina or catalogue aria. Lepevelo sings this to Donna Elvira, who is another one of Don Giovanni's past conquests. And to console her, Lepevelo recounts how many uh, women his master Don Giovanni has seduced over the years. He has kept a catalogue of the conquests, a catalogue de la quest, and he recounts amazing facts how in Italy there were 640 women that Don Giovanni seduced, 231 in Germany, 100 in France, 91 in Turkey. And then he sings in Italian, My Espana Milece. That is in Spain, there were 1,003. So it is, of course, very tongue in cheek, but Mozart characterizes it brilliantly. Thank you. 